Most people assume that visual impairments occur when something structurally happens to the eyes. But did you know that your ability to visually recognize is all based in the brain? So what happens if there is damage to the visual pathways and processing centers of the brain? CVI, or cerebral cortical visual impairments, is the leading cause of childhood visual impairment. CVI is caused by damage or interruption to the visual pathways or processing areas of the brain, which means the brain has more difficulties processing what the eyes see. You can have perfectly healthy eyes and still have CVI. However, it is common to have CVI and an ocular diagnosis, such as strabismus or nystagmus. Individuals with CVI have difficulty making sense of what they see. This can affect everything from being aware of items or toys, maintaining visual attention to their surroundings, visually recognizing a caregiver, or knowing what is happening at a distance. A noisy environment, feeling ill or tired, seizures, recovery from seizures, or fatigue can make vision use nearly impossible for someone with CVI. Incidental learning, which is naturally learning through observation, plays a crucial role in development. For children with CVI, they may need more direct instruction because they miss out on these natural learning opportunities. We often see that children with CVI develop their own non-visual strategies to learn and explore their environment. When you consider all of this, CVI is a big deal. Despite being the leading cause of childhood visual impairment in the U.S., CVI remains poorly understood and underdiagnosed. In 2020, a large study from the U.K. found that 1 in 30 kids in the elementary school classrooms may have a CVI-related difficulty. Recently, a first-of-its-kind U.S. prevalence study from the CVI Center at Perkins using medical claims data from McKenzie and Company revealed that there are at least 180,000 kids and young adults with CVI, and this is likely a big underestimate. Here in the U.S., of the 180,000, only 20% have a CVI diagnosis. That means over 150,000 are living in the world where nobody knows they have CVI. Among the patients identified in this study with CVI, 64% have epilepsy. With CVI and epilepsy, we're seeing overlapping causes and associated conditions. There's a wide range of genetic epilepsy, such as Angelman syndrome, Rett syndrome, CDKL5, and an SCN8A, as well as structural causes of epilepsy, such as focal cortical dysplasia, traumatic brain injury, perinatal brain injury, and polymicrogyria. Additionally, conditions such as lennox gastaut syndrome, Dravet syndrome, and infantile spasms are important when considering CVI. There is a higher prevalence of CVI in children with cerebral palsy, epilepsy, autism, developmental delay, and rare diseases. Complications at birth, lack of oxygen, pediatric stroke, and genetic conditions are common causes of CVI. So you might be asking, how is it possible that so many kids are missed? One reason could be that many of our children are so medically complex and can't tell us what they are experiencing. Many diagnoses may overshadow the visual behaviors of CVI. Other times, kids with CVI behave in ways that appear like other diagnoses. Children with complex neurological impairments, including epilepsy, are at an increased risk for CVI. These impairments can affect the brain's ability to process and interpret visual information, leading to the unique visual challenges such as only noticing something that moves or that has a light component, difficulty returning a social smile, or appearing to touch or listen before looking. Early identification and intervention are crucial for helping children with CVI access their world. Learn more about CVI at cvinow.org and learn more about developmental and epileptic encephalopathies at deepconnections.net.